guys, welcome back to another video. What a week full of caca when it comes to stress levels. From pissed off DOT officers to runaway loads to a blown truck tire to wasted money and pretty much a lack of service, I will tell you all about it at the end of this video. But for now, let's take a look at what's going on in the trucking market, what has changed in terms of capacity, volumes, rejections, diesel prices. And then we'll take a look at the best areas to be if you are a dry van, reefer, or flatbed operator. Ready? Let's go. So starting with the carrier population, as of last week, we saw the biggest decrease net in carriers in the number of MCs since February of this year. To be precise, we saw 671 carriers net leave the market. Now, in terms of the spot to contract rate spread, where we see how much more contract carriers get paid than those spot carriers, again, we're paying attention to the dark blue line because that's us in 2024. The light blue is 2023. So again, as a reminder, what we want to see is this line going higher to make the margin smaller. Currently, contract carriers on average are earning about 60 cents per mile more than those spot carriers. But if you take a look at this chart, as a whole, you can see that this year contract carriers have been earning less than last year. Now let's talk about the general freight volume. White line is us in 2024, blue line is 2023. So we can see that, yeah, there was a drop in volume because of Labor Day, of course, but now it's shot up. So volumes are high again, and again, they are higher than they were in 2023, which is a pattern we have been seeing throughout this year. The question is, what is going on with rejections? Well, rejections, the white line, which is us this year compared to last year, rejections also seem to be more or less recovering a little bit from uh, Labor Day weekend, but it's nothing to get too excited about because rejections currently are at 4.57%. So not a lot. Now let's talk about diesel prices quickly. Diesel prices have been going down, something that we have seen for the past couple of weeks, I would say. And currently, diesel prices are on average $3.68 per gallon. And this is a national average according to actual truck stops. Okay, now let's talk about equipment specific, starting with dry vans on the spot market using FTR Intel's data. So week over week, spot market rates for dry vans fell by two cents per mile. Year over year, dry van rates are down 5% and over the past five years, they're down 16%. Now, volumes is where the problem is at, but this also has to do with the fact that volumes shot up right before Labor Day. Volumes are down 20% week over week. Now, if we're comparing to last year, volumes are down 30%. And over the past five years, volumes are down 44%. Now, in order for us to figure out where the better areas for dry vans are, we take a look at Sonar's map, rejections and volumes. And just using this data, I create this table, which makes it easier to understand. So let's start with the top five in the volume category and in the rejection category. These do not mean these market areas, just because they're on this list, doesn't mean these are the best market areas to be, but it's just good to know. So top five volume states in the general market, not just the spot market for dry vans are Ontario, California, Los Angeles, California, Atlanta, Georgia, Detroit, Michigan, and Dallas, Texas. Now, in terms of the top five rejection areas for dry vans, again, doesn't mean these are the best markets, are Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa, Green Bay, Wisconsin, Dubuque, Iowa, and Rock Island, Illinois. Now I'm gonna make this smaller so that you can understand. So here we have the top five contract to spot. What I do is I take the volumes and rejections in each market area to see where more loads actually hit the spot market from the contract market. Those areas are Houston, Texas, Ontario, California, Green Bay, Wisconsin, Los Angeles, California, and Atlanta, Georgia. But then what I do is I look at the DAT heat maps to see what it's like on the spot market, because this tells us about the volume, but it doesn't tell us about 
the capacity. So in this column, you will see the capacity situation in each of these markets specifically. The higher the number, seven being the highest, the tighter the capacity. So there is really a lack of trucks compared to the amount of loads. So you can see that Houston, Ontario, Los Angeles, and Atlanta actually for dry vans don't have enough capacity to cover the amount of loads in that area. Green Bay, Wisconsin is so-so. But what we can't forget is the surrounding markets because these trucks, they don't just deliver a load in Atlanta, Georgia, and then stick to Atlanta, Georgia. Most of the time, people deadhead up to 200, 300, 400 miles. Pretty much every single one of these markets is surrounded by overcapacity. Atlanta, Georgia is the only place that is not extreme overcapacity, although there is still overcapacity. It's just a little bit less than the other areas. All right, now let's talk about reefers and the spot market. So reefers saw a 10 cent decrease per mile week over week. Year over year, their rates are down 5.7% and over the past five years, they're down 13%. Volumes week over week went down by 19.5%. Year over year, reefer volumes are down 17% on the spot market and over the the past five years, they're down 37%. So again, using the two sonar maps, we try to figure out the better areas to go to. So the top five volume areas for reefers in the general market are Joplin, Missouri, Allentown, Pennsylvania, Lakeland, Florida, Joliet, Illinois, and Atlanta, Georgia. In terms of rejections, we have Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Pendleton, Oregon, Little Rock, Arkansas, and North Platte, Nebraska. Now putting these two together, we can figure out where more contract volume falls to the spot market. And those areas are Twin Falls, Idaho, Pendleton, Oregon, Allentown, Pennsylvania, Joplin, Missouri, and Joliet, Illinois. Now looking at these particular market areas without looking around, we can see that Twin Falls, Pendleton, and Allentown, they don't have enough trucks exactly there to pick up the amount of loads. Uh, Joplin, Missouri, and Joliet, Illinois have a little bit more capacity, although it's still a tight market. However, looking at the surrounding areas, we can see that Twin Falls is actually good because there is a lack of surrounding capacity. Everything else has some capacity to it. Now in the brackets, you will see where that capacity would be deadheading from. Finally, last but not least, we of course have have our flatbeds and flatbeds uh, saw a three cent increase week over week after experiencing I believe it was 10 weeks of straight decreases so at least a little bit of fresh air for flatbeds I don't know now rate year over year is down four percent and over the past five years flatbed rates are actually down uh, nine percent volumes week over week are down nine point two percent so yeah definitely decreased from last week however year over year volumes are up six point five percent and over the past five years unfortunately they are down 31 percent so now let's talk about the better areas to go for flatbeds and again i do truck stop maps just because i don't have um or sonar doesn't have data for flatbeds as much so this is just the spot market the darker an area is the more loads come out of that area Nothing really changes, although some areas did start getting lighter. Funny enough, Texas is not the darkest state anymore. Usually Texas has the most amount of loads. Now it's not the case. Now let's take a look at capacity. So same concept, the darker an area is, the more capacity in that area. And something that really jumps out at you is that while Texas doesn't have as many loads as some other states, it does have the most amount of capacity. And I'm talking about over 4,000 trucks in in terms of the load volume, it's a little bit under 2000. So you can imagine. So you can see capacity really likes to hang out in Texas, in the Midwest, in the East Coast, and in California. Putting those two together, we get the load to truck ratio to figure out where are the better areas to negotiate in. So anything red, is over capacity. There are not enough loads for the amount of trucks. California just turned red. Anything beige is going to be about one load per truck. Anything yellow like Arkansas is going to be about two loads per truck. And anything green, Washington, Oregon, Mississippi, and Alabama, these are over three loads per truck. In general, 
as of last week, the situation on a national level got a little bit better for flatbeds in terms of the load to truck ratio. It was 0.97 loads per truck before, now it's 0.99. So still less than a load per truck nationally, uh, technically speaking, but it did get a little bit better. So let's be real, the market is the market. There are some positive signs like the diesel prices going down. There are some negative signs like the spot market basically crashing and drowning and burning. But darn it, what is happening to this industry and the people who are related to this industry in one way or another? And I'm not talking about truckers here. So this week alone, we got a pissed off, like pissed off DOT officer who decided to do a random roadside inspection, woke my guy up because my guy ran out of hours the night before and parked on an off ramp. So what did he write us up for? Well, he couldn't find much, but the thing that he did write us up for is for the fact that we did not have basically printed documents in our truck. You know that DOT folder? What we started doing is we keep electronic copies because these documents get updated more often than my guys are at home. It's a hard truth. It's a terrible truth. This is the market. I'm not saying we're blameless here. Of course not, but I think this is too much. You can't find anything, so you start writing up for absolute crap. How does this affect safety? Again, I'm not gonna go against... Uh, the rule of law, I suppose. I suppose you do have to have printed out documents in your truck, otherwise someone is gonna die somewhere. Anyway, then we had several situations where you book a load and then magically somehow right before you come to the shipper, it is moved for the next day and you're basically stuck because you know me, I wait loads out and by the time we get loaded, it's pretty late, which means that I take the risk of having my truck sit empty. So this load gets moved to a different day or magically gets canceled altogether. I wonder why. So so there's the load issue. And then we had the blown tire issue, which was the cherry on top of my week. So let me tell you the story. My guy, right after the roadside inspection, he started driving. His tire blew. Okay, it happens. It blew. It mangled the mud flap behind that tire. So he went to get it fixed. They fixed the tire for him. They fixed the mud flap for him. But when he looked at it, he said, listen, the mud flap rod, I think it needs to be moved a little bit more back. Now the repair shop insisted that no, it does not. It's perfectly fine. You're good to go. So my guy, of course, trusting these professionals, right? Right? He heads down the road and what happens within 200 miles of him leaving that darn shop? This happens. So we had to refix everything at another shop. Do you think that first shop is willing to give me a refund? No, they're not even willing to talk to me. They screen my calls. They don't answer. They don't call me back. They don't answer their emails. But you know what? Screw that. I contacted my credit card company. I put a stop payment on that transaction. So I am pretty sure I'll be hearing from a very pissed off repair shop within a few days, maximum a week. That's a way to get them to call you back. The point is, What's happening is crazy. And it's not just the trucking market and the freight rates and the volumes and all of that data, right? It's the people, the anger, the lack of service, the lack of human decency. And I have a question for you guys. Have you been feeling the same way I'm feeling today? Do you feel like something happened to the actual people, the people who we rely on every day for our operations, right? From the person who is fixing our truck to the shipper, to the broker, what happened to the people. I'm very curious to hear your experiences. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me and watching today. I hope you have a fantastic week or rest of your week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep learning. See you in the next video.